Hi, this is James at Ike GPS. By now you're probably familiar with the technical aspects of Spike, everything that Spike collects, how we go about collecting Spike, how we use a laser, photo measure, but you may be wondering to yourself now, how do I actually put all those great features to work? And that's what this video uh, will show you here today. Well, what's really nice is, is that, yes, we have the Spike, and we have this integration with Survey123, and those tools together work very hard to provide you with a combined tool set to help boost field data productivity. And we do that by creating, with Spike, a creative solution to go out and collect very simple types of data, but very impactful for the right applications. And what's nice is, is that on the Survey123 side, really solves sort of that problem of how do I get that data off the device into a geodatabase. One of the things that I'm most proud about what we do with our partnership with Esri is, is that we have created a very simple workflow, very simple for the GIS administrator to be able to create, but also a workflow that's really very simple for anyone to go out and collect data with just a little bit of training. Now there's a lot of different functions in here, and I'm not going to read off every single one. But the ones that I think that are really the most important uh, from a field measurement perspective, one is photo measurement. So that's able to measure areas, heights, widths along flat planes. So think about the side of a building or on the ground. And then there's point-to-point -point measurement. So how do I measure the distance between two points in a space? So imagine uh, the distance between two trees. But then we also get into GPS locations because if we're talking about geospatial, GPS location is really important because it's not just about what something is, it's about where something is, right? And so to be able to collect data, not only where you are, but where a feature might be with a distance offset is of critical importance also. So imagine yourself being in a field doing a tree inventory and you can stay in one spot and capture the GPS location of six, seven, or eight trees all from that single spot and have all that data populate immediately into Survey123, updating your geodatabase. And these other pieces here, you know, such as time and date, pitch, rotation, things like that, those are helpful, uh, but those are really more meaningful as part of the overall metadata because we know in the geospatial world that metadata is really important of what, collect, what was collected, when it was collected, who collected it, and those types of things. Once again, working with Spike and Survey123, all those things are certainly capable. So let me show you some examples. And the first example I'd like to share with you today uh, is offset distance. And one of the most important things about uh, usually collecting things with off distance where there's a need to collect an offset distance has to do with safety. And this is a great example of that. Because if you need to go and collect the distance uh, between you and a feature, and in this particular example we're talking about the width of a road. Uh, we have plenty of options to do that physically, but they're all really just real-life world games of Frogger, of trying to have to get across that road, and especially with ongoing traffic, having to stop traffic. You know, those things are safety issues. So with Spike to be able to capture that distance here on the, uh, um, between uh, the, the road distance, all I simply do is just stand on the side of the road, point the laser at the other side of the road, take the photo, and it gives me the distance between uh, across the road. And you can see that distance indicated by 31 feet 2 inches on the, on the reticle. It's really just that simple. And so once again, let's go back to what I said before about doing very simple things but very impactful for the right applications. Here's some other examples of offset distance examples. You know, being able to capture things such as setbacks, right of ways, uh, width of objects, clearances, and so on. The list goes on and on. When you really think about it, there's a really a lot of need to know distances between objects. And in this particular example is outflow of a culvert down to uh, the wetland. Or think about how many times you've had to measure uh, the width of something like, say, a river. Uh, well, remember, Spike's laser rangefinder goes out to 650 feet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch to a short demo to actually show you that, that data capture uh, live uh, in a video. Okay, check this out. So we're going to start off in Survey123 for ArcGIS like we always do. 
and we're going to go ahead and select our form and we're going to go then select distance to an object and then we're going to just simply measure the width of this road and so what we're going to do is we're going to step to the side of the road point the laser to the other side of the road make sure the laser is on target take the photo I've just captured my distance to target we're back to survey one two three for ArcGIS and there's my record now what I'd like to do is share with you example applications of offset location. Sounds like a lot, but it's really quite simple. So that's simply, once again, of being able to capture the XY coordinate pair or the GPS location of the photographed object with a distance. Now if you're familiar with the technology of Spike, you know how we do this is, is that uh, with, I have the GPS location from the mobile device, I have a laser that gives me distance to target, and then using the compass and the inclinometer that then allows me to be able to calculate that that distance offset GPS point uh, in, in, this, in, the, in the space in, in the real world. And this is pretty handy uh, especially because of the fact that if we're capturing something from a distance because of safety or of convenience uh, you know we want to make sure that we're putting it in the most accurate spot possible. And so once again this is one of the advantages of working with a laser in, and the technology of Spike is, is that uh, everything that I'm collecting is going to be in its real world spot but also you also have the GPS location of the device so you have a record of where someone was when they were observing it. So in these particular examples you see us collecting manholes you also see uh, collecting um, a signage inventory a very popular application for Spike but also just imagine uh, being able to capture uh, the location of both the feature and of the individual for things such as code enforcement. So that you actually have a working proof that someone was at a location and observed it from a particular angle from a particular location. Some offset location examples. These are all very common from our user community. Uh, a lot has to do uh, with uh, sometimes of documenting vegetation. So think about um, documenting invasive species along a watershed. And also another popular one uh, that not a lot of people think about is we have spike being used quite a bit uh, to be able to document wildlife. So uh, once again think of things like raptor nests that may be up on a cliff or out of the way. Certainly something that you wouldn't want to expend a lot of energy trying to get up to if you didn't have to. Uh, but also to be able to take the picture give it its GPS location and get it into the form because a lot of times mistakes are made as far as documenting where photos are and where they, uh, the, the photo numbers and getting those into the forms and all those other types of things because uh, if you've ever had to do that you know that that's a, that's a pretty big hassle uh, to be able to document, that the, to be able to combine those things later and the fact that those things are integrated is especially helpful so you have photos, metadata, additional forms, all in one single collection. So now what I'd like to do is actually show you a working demo of how we go about collecting this information. In this example, we're going to do target location, and we've chosen a culvert as an example. So we're going to estimate the GPS location of an object. So from a safe distance, perhaps this is a point source solution example of where I want to document pollution coming out of a culvert. I'll just point that laser, take the photo, and then that's going to go ahead and correct the record back to survey one, two, three. And then now I have a great record of the culvert and where perhaps this pollution source is coming from. And I have the latitude and longitude captured within the form. So now let's go to example applications of point to point. A lot of people know Spike for photo measurement. And photo measurement is really an exceptional way to go out and collect the heights and widths on a, on a 2D surface. But what do you do if the building doesn't fit within your field of view? Say the object is large. Or what do you do uh, if you don't have a 2D plane? All right. So remember with photo measure, we can only measure on a 2D plane such as the side of a building or on the ground. Well, how do we, how do we solve for that? Well, what we did was is that we created an application that's called point to point. And point to point is simply is just standing still putting the laser on point A, pivoting and turning, putting it on point B, and getting a straight line distance between those two points, but also getting the grade, uh, sometimes it's also called slope, grade, or pitch, as an angle or as a percentage. 
This particular example sitting in front of me happens to be an, a, uh, an example of ADA compliance. Uh, how wide is this ramp? How long is this ramp? What is the grade or pitch of this ramp? These are all things that are physically measured today uh, that could be done with the spike. Some other examples of point-to-point. -point. Well, let's just say, for example, that uh, the perspective of having to uh, measure a lake, because you know I could measure this lake by just standing on the side and just using target distance for that. But if that perspective wasn't right for me, and I, if I was, say, looking down the length of the lake and I wanted to measure from one side to the next, with actually, actually, actually having to stand on the side of the lake, I could do that. I would just simply put the laser on one side of the lake, pivot and turn, hit the other, and that would give me the distance between those two points. So, you know, I could do this for roads, ponds, creeks, any number of things that you can think of. I'm sure you're your imagination is running wild with all the different things that you might be able to, uh, to measure uh, in this way. Now what I'd like to do is show you a quick video to show you how we collect point to point. And now we're with point to point and so we're starting off in the spike app. And remember we're capturing distance between point A and point B in a 3D plane. And so we'll point the laser at the first target, point A. We'll wait for the box around the image to go from red to green. Uh, we have that, and so we're going to go ahead and take the laser and point it at the point B, and then now I have my distance collected between point A and point B with two handy reference photos on the top so I can see where point A and point B are, make sure that I've hit those targets. But then I also get my grade, or sometimes also called slope, gradient, or pitch, as an angle or as a percentage. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. And hopefully these videos and these slides have given you really good creative ideas about how you might be able to use spike out in the field. Thank you for your time. Happy spiking.